Hello, it's me, Amanda. AKA Rogue though, cause look at me, sugar. Look at this hair. And I'm also losing my voice a dang bit, so. It kind of works though, I think, because it makes it sound a little bit more gravelly, like Rogue. So we're gonna head out to watch uh, My Adventures with Superman, or try to. I'm a little late, because it took me a while to get ready. I wanted to also do a live stream, so I might do a vertical live today on YouTube, we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, and then I have a panel at 1.30 for Mad Cave. And then From the Ashes is at three, I wanna catch that. And then we have an interview after that with uh, Joe Quesada, if we can get to it. I still need to confirm the location, so we'll see if that happens, but that should be fun. And Crunchyroll tonight, if we go. But yeah, and a party. It's a little big day. It's a big day, it's big hair, let's do it. Also, should I spin to show them the, do they get the full fit? Do, 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 do. Also, you guys should go check out Black Mist Clothing, who made this freaking bomb cosplay, minus the boots, not the boots but everything else and minus the wig. The wig was also an amazing crafter. I'm gonna put links for you guys down in the video description or in the comment, uh, the pinned comment. So make sure you check out both of them, please. They're amazing craftspeople. And you know, I don't usually make my cosplays. I get them custom made. So I like to shout people out when they do amazing work and I love to work with them. So I'm excited, let's do it. Yeah. Y'all, hey, we're gonna do a bit of vlogging while we walk. I think my mic's still on. Uh, we are headed over to the Hilton San Diego Bay front. <laughs> Sorry, stop for a few pictures. So I don't know if I'm gonna make my adventures with Superman, but I am trying my darndest. Oh my goodness. Ghostface trying to put the moves on me. Don't tell Gambit, don't tell Remy. And now we're gonna head over there and uh, we'll see if we can uh, catch the end of it. Uh, Duck is doing some editing, so I'm kind of flying solo right now. And then after, uh, we're gonna see if we can maybe come back to the hall for a bit. Maybe stay inside where it's air conditioning. Because goodness knows this leather jacket <laughs> with the suit. I'm already hot with, with my wig and everything. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, let's walk. Everybody's going to Hall H. And we are headed across the way to the Hilton San Diego Bayfront. Now I'm gonna be going in and out of this accent probably all day, sugar, because I wanna practice for when I do the Marvel Multiverse RPG, which will be over at Gen Con. So we'll walk over there and I'll be in and out of it. So my apologies if I offend anyone who is actually from the South <laughs> with my attempt at a Southern accent, but I'm doing my best. Dad, she knows one thing for sure. She is looking for a human mate and she definitely wants it to be Jimmy Fleaver. <laughs> oh. But you know, it, with anything, things take time. Uh, you know, why, why rock the boat with this fantastic mosh-in of, uh, people that we have? All right, so no, we I'll are, we are here. I'm with Maggie and, it was Jake, right? Yes. Yeah, Jake. Nice to meet I don't think we did that. I don't uh, know if we did that. Have we done that before? Uh, no, other than this show. Not other than this show. This is the first time we're meeting. And you haven't met Rogue yet, so there you go. Now we're re-meeting. Yeah. So we're walking the hall. I'll drop this for a bit. I'm just trying to practice, but I feel like in the vlog, I'm gonna annoy the heck out of all of you if I do it the whole time. I feel like that's a challenge. It is a challenge, and I do love do a wanna, challenge. Do you wanna check out the channel? We're gonna check out these Tamagotchis over here. Yeah. Because they got the new connects. And if you've watched my vlogs from last year, you know I love a good Tamagotchi. I love a good Tamagotchi. It's my childhood. It is, it's my childhood too. Well, you know, my childhood in the future, since I guess Rogue, her childhood would have been like the 70s, maybe? Yeah, I don't think, yeah. I don't think Rogue and Rogue's, Rogue this is you. Rogue's adulthood, I guess, in the this 90s. Is, this is, She's yeah, in the, the 30s 90s. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I got this one. Which other one do I have? I have that and uh, R2-D2, I have that one. 
I think I might need Are they sold out of, are these the, oh no, that's plush. I know they have the new Connect ones. Oh my gosh, also just hearing them all go off. Is this just yeah, everyone in line be. that has one, or is these that the these? Oh, here's two that aren't sold out. These are the Connects? Yeah. Right? Oh my gosh, you can actually... Do I need it? I don't know. It's actually not that expensive. It's not, but that's where they get you. That is how they get like, you. Like, it's only $20, and then you're like, oh, yeah, well, I can do that. I can do that again. I can do that 10 more times. And you're like, wait a minute, I have no money. Is, I let them die. I let them die so I let mine die, too. They that's die my problem. I'm a bad Tamagotchi mom. What is it? Uh, he is uh, Charlie Brown, but he oh. painted the thing on his forehead for my hair. Hey, Charlie! <laughs> Charlie, can we see your forehead? <laughs> oh, Charlie. there he is. I don't think he's Charlie Brown. Oh, there he, he is. is. There he is. He wanted to get to the forehead. You look great, Charlie Brown. Oh, uh, and good. we have a Lucy. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. So this is cute. great. So cute. This is great. I love it. All right. Well, yeah, I don't know if I... I kind of want one, but... I bought a lot of One Piece cards yesterday, and that was pretty expensive, so... Maybe I should wait, but... I always want Tamagotchis. I should've just talked to Bandai. They were gonna have me come in. Bandai, I'm sorry I missed you. But I still love you. She gets a real Tamagotchi. Yeah, do you think my, the best. my friend who just has a, a newborn baby, do you think she needs a Tamagotchi, or do you think she's already got enough responsibility? I think she's probably good at this she's juncture, good. She but... She Tamagotchi? Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely what a baby is. Yeah. yeah. Tamagotchis are, like, preparing us to yeah. be parents, aren't they? It's kind of weird. It's making me feel weirder about Tamagotchis. Do you think I never the Furbies about will make a comeback? I mean, I know they did a new Furby thing. I think they're trying to make Furbies make a comeback. I think they're, they're vintage. So, vintage. I think maybe. Anything's possible. They're really like a child. You teach them, they learn. You teach them and they learn. Yeah, they're like different. children that grow up to be serial killers. That's what a yeah, Furby's and if like. if you don't talk to them, they get weird. I had, I had like three when I was a child. They got strange and they would wake up in the middle of the night and talk to each other because I didn't play with them enough. Oh, oh my God. God. We were talking about Tamagotchis for a second. I was talking about Furbies, Furbies. Oh, I thought, okay, cool, group. We don't really need anything, do we? I met this guy. He ran a Kickstarter with us uh, called like Burger Time. It's really cool. And those popsicles back there are... Popsicles? Like just tops here. I think it's such a cute concept. Do you see them? Where are they? Down there? Oh, sorry. We just want to peek at the popsicles. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. Yeah, I take a bite out of Lucky Bear. So what else? That's cute. Do you see these? The little the vegetable, like crab veggie thing. Oh my gosh. The dinosaur. I think that's supposed to be a dinosaur. Wow. Well, that's. They That's have that tiger. Else. They have a plushie of him up front. That's where I got that I've sticker. Met from. That oh yeah! He's amazing. Very talented artist. I've met him like a few times at Comic Con. I think he might have his own booth actually. I think yeah. he does. Yeah, I bought. A and bunch he's of selling a plushies. bunch of plushies. Yeah. And we were looking at them yesterday. We're here with Juju, Hello. Straw Hat Goofy. How's it going? If you guys don't know him. Well, tell people what it's you okay. do. Uh, hi, I'm Juju, a.k.a. Shrai Goofy, the movie guy. I talk about movies, I break them down, and I overthink about them. I also do interviews and cool stuff like that, podcasting. It's a weird job, many titles, you know. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I don't know. Have you, have you like, explained it to your mom yet, like, my what mom, your job is? Yeah, yeah my I, mom I, was, like, my mom literally just supported me, like, going to do my own thing full time. Uh-huh. And she's like, I saw that your video is this many views. Yeah. I'm always checking my stuff. Uh -huh. Do you ever get, did your mom ever tell you like you should be doing this? Uh, my aunt tried. Uh, she doesn't understand what I do, not one iota. She just posts every now and then. I post a famous person on my Instagram, and she's like, "How did you do that?" And I'm just like, "I don't know." Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's... my my, uh, my partner's mom will always be like, "You should have these here, man. These are trending right now." I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, Paula. Sure. We'll do Whatever. It. Yeah, like yeah. turtles are trending. I should talk about turtles yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what she'll say. That's cool. Awesome. So yeah, we're just gonna be walking the hall. You're just getting recognized left, right, and center. No one knows who I am. I'm in a wig. <laughs> You'll never know me. <laughs> Suckers can't find me. Because everyone always finds me with my red hair. So when I don't have it, it's like, where'd Amanda go? She doesn't exist. Let's roll. I'm gonna slap the shit So we're in a nice little crew right now. We're just walking around. I think we're gonna walk around for a couple more minutes. Oh, there's Witchblade. Oh, do I get the Witchblade cover? I think I should. Maybe, yes. There was one that 
that Duck wanted, and I feel like I should get it for him. Let me see, let me see. Oh my goodness. Invisible Woman. I can't hear anything anybody says anywhere. Anyway. <laughs> there's too many, there's too many people. All right. Wait, I need to stop here. I need to get Witchblade. I need to get, yeah, I need to get, I need to get something. Yeah, I gotta stop, I think. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. I, I would love to get one of these from you. The Virgin, if you still have them. Yes. Yeah? That's Those amazing. we have. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I noticed you guys are sold out of, a, out of some things, which we didn't stop yesterday, and I was like, we should stop if we want something, because it might be gone. Yeah, yeah, these and these have cleared Go on. out. Yeah, I like this one, so yeah, we should that's good. Okay. Hopefully that's what Duck likes. I don't know if it'll be what he likes. We'll see. All right, I'm going to buy this, so um, I'm going to do that, and then I think we might go to some pinball. Thank you for uh, for allowing me to moderate and you know be part of this. So, thanks for showing up. Yeah, <laughs> on time. <laughs> Olivier Chalabert and I go back what 30 years maybe. I really would like to say 45, but I think it sounds more like 2000. This is Dan Penosian, by the way. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, we've been sort of browsing and, and discussing about collaborate, potential collaboration for a long time because I think that uh, starting with second the oxygen here, but you know, a little height. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, way too often you know, there's there's a lot of new companies that are announced, and when you read the press releases. They come across as uh, press releases for the Hollywood Reporter, right? They talk about it. right here. Woo! Uh, cosplayer, you name it, she's, she's done it all at conventions. Um, and we have a lot of friends here who we could not have done this stuff without. Uh, Richard Yusinoff, ladies and gentlemen. I married my wife for 25 years, Joe, and uh, connected us both, and uh, Joe thought it was a good idea. So I sort of, it was a pinch me, pinch me moment where I found myself working with Joe in Idaho. Uh, right in this comic, and you know, we connected creatively very quickly. So, here we are walking. I'm going to be in and out of my accent probably again. Just stay, just stay out of it. Don't, stay don't, out of it. don't force it. Um, but we just finished the Mad Cave and heard about amazing comics. He's going to be Joe Posada's company that he's doing with Mad Cave. Very exciting. And we're actually going to do a little interview with him later today, as I said earlier. And I think I could have said all that because, well, I was given that information a little early. The embargo should be up by the time you see this and everything. So. We'll be Gucci, we'll be Gucci. So we're on our way now to um, From the Ashes. Also, Duck is the real MVP. Duck got me coffee. I really needed it. So now I feel completely refreshed, like I could be rogue all day, even though probably I'll change at some point. Because this the wig is amazing. It's perfect. But, it is squeezing my head quite tightly, as is the leg of a wig, as you want, so your wig doesn't fall off. So they could like flip my hair and everything, and it would still be cool. So, we'll walk across to 6D. 6D? No, 6A. Oh, good lord. And, uh, and then after that, we got an interview, and then I think we're going to head back. Has like some some amazing things to say about comics. I can't.
cannot wait to talk to him. I am like, I am, my mind is blown. A little bit that we're going to be doing that. Uh, that's going to be really, really awesome. I love the passion. What's happening though? How are we going to read all these comics? I don't know. It's going to be rough like, on my so bank account. We've got DC. DC is doing absolute power, which is going to lead into all in absolute DC, which sounds all amazing. We have from the ashes which sounds like it's going to be amazing. I've heard about to head to this panel, and if we can get in, I'm sure they're going to blow our minds. And then, we also have, after that, we got everything that's indie. We got Image, we got Transformers. Also, did you say Transformers won an Eisner last night? Yeah. Who won that? Williamson? Who won that? Daniel Warren Johnson. Daniel's G.I. Joe, right? Daniel Warren Johnson, writer and artist on Transformers. I feel like we should go this way. We should not go, because we'll get stuck. We'll get stuck taking pictures. Oh, okay. So we just finished <laughs> X-Men from the Ashes, which was really good. Uh, dang, that was quite a panel. There were so many details that they just dropped. They showed us a million covers. We saw like a year of almost like what's coming, uh, through covers anyways. They were kind of tight lips, I think, about the direction for each story, where we're going, the villains that are coming. So yeah, we, uh, we watched the panel. I went up and asked a question. Duck was swept up in the moment of my question that he didn't film it, but it did happen. And I did it all in character, or well, I did it all in my accent. And I asked, uh, my question was, what did I ask? I asked that, what are some characters that you're, you have in your book that are iconic, that you are introducing something new or making sort of like a, giving them a different perspective or like kind of a shift or change that we're gonna see. Which one is your favorite that you're doing that with, basically? And I asked specifically Gail Simone about Rogue and she said kind of the same thing she said in the panel, which was that Rogue is going to be focusing on whether or not Professor X's dream is tangible or not. And then I got from Kelly and Lanning, it's not Lansing apparently, I think it's Lanning, that's what Brevoort said. I also learned Tom Brevoort, not Brevoort, my apologies for saying those wrong for so long. He said, they both said, they said David Elaine and they said Enol for their book. So, and then everyone else was like, I will belay this, I will hold off. Well, I guess it would be hard for, was Alyssa Wong on the panel? I think she came out for Psylocke, right? At the, at the end. I guess that would be hard to answer because like the answer is probably going to be Psylocke, you know, like you got one. It's a solo book. So yeah, it was really cool. Also, uh, Declan Shalvey said that I was honoring his like 90s crush dressed as Rogue. So that was pretty cool. So Declan, if you're watching this, I'm glad that you enjoyed the cosplay. I really tried to do 90s proud. So, okay, let's go find Jim Lee. There's a lot of mystery, I feel like, involved, yeah. So uh, let's see if we can uncover some of the mysteries. I'll do my best. Uh, I want to know, why do you feel that this is the right time for Amazing Comics to be happening? And what do you think about like this timing is important? Well, you know, I, it, the timing is literally just creatively we're, we're, we're on a roll. And we feel like it's the right, right thing for us to do, you know? Uh, so Charles and I started, you know, collaborating on a project. Uh, I've had the idea for Amazing in my head for a very, very, very long time. Um, you know, once once I left Marvel, um, 
it, the only thing I could think about doing was doing my own company and doing my own sort of creator own project. So that was really the, the, the impetus of it. And then, you know, talking to Mad Cave and Dupuis and this whole deal sort of coming together. Um, it's been about you know a little more, a little more than a year and a half we've been working on this, the actual deal and the product, you know, to get, get the books out there and stuff like that. So, uh, I'll get the books finished. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been in the works for a long time, and timing wise, just the timing is the timing. You know, when, when I when I started Event Comics, it was one of the worst times in the history of comic books, and you know, Event Comics led to Marvel Knights, which led to me becoming editor in chief, and you know, you can't necessarily you know. Pick your timing all the time, yeah. but it just felt it felt right, you know, to do amazing, and you know, it also feels good to finally announce it. Honestly, I'm like really, really, really hyped, and I will say I think it's interesting that you said, you know, before it, it kind of felt like a weird, like it was kind of a weird timing, and now I would say this is a time where I feel like comics are everything is so good right now, like yeah. everything from the big two to indie to everything I've been reading from Mad Cave. Like I just started reading Dick Tracy a little while ago when that came out, and that's been amazing. So. I feel like this is definitely the right time, especially for the direction you want to do. What do you believe will make Amazing Comics stand out in com compared to sort of everything else that we have out there right now? Because it sounds like you want to do something really unique with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, traditionally people know me for doing superhero stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And the first book we're doing is Disciple, which is an idea that started with, with Charles. So Charles, you can talk a little bit about Disciple. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think to your point about the timing I mean I think uh, good stories stand the test of time there's no never a good time for that I mean I think um, you know, it's a it's a fun interesting way to retail uh, Hamlet, Hamlet. Re 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 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so used to keeping the secret I'm not sure whether or not I can say about something. It. This is we're retelling Hamlet and it's very exciting honestly yeah, yeah. I don't think this is gonna be Hamlet anyway anyone's ever seen it before no no not at no. all it's definitely not I mean, thematically, it's interesting, but it's fun. It's a uh, thrilling. There's a detective element. There's a sort of horror afterlife element, and I think, yeah, I think people enjoy it. Yeah, I personally am really excited to see it unfold. It looks the art also. Mm. Oh my gosh, the art looks phenomenal. Oh. It looks amazing. Thank you, thank you. For and I'm very excited for just this direction. I mean, I love the story of Hamlet. I'm a big Shakespeare nerd myself. Oh, great. So also to hear that we're going to get that story, and also to hear that we're going to get the before, the prequel, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, unheard of. It was, you know what, Hamlet was good, but he missed a few things. Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. Yeah. I mean, there's but, stuff that needs to happen before it's even Hamlet set up. Shakespeare, that's just Shakespeare, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so, so um, no, I mean, you know, we, we, we looked at Hamlet, and we realized that, you know, there there's a lot in the universe that we've created for this version of Hamlet called Disciple. Well, first of all, the one thing we do is, uh, I'll tell you a little story. So, so when I when I was in grammar school, my teacher was trying to get me to read Shakespeare, right? Yeah. And, Not and an I, easy just, sell. I couldn't get past the language. Yeah. And then it just so happened the West Side Story was on TV like the week afterwards, and she said, "You need to watch this." And to get my teacher to say I need to watch TV, that was pretty cool. Pretty so I watched it, fell in love with West Side Story, and, I, and she said, "So what do you think?" I said, "I love it." And she's like. Romeo and Juliet. I'm like, get out! Right? <laughs> so then I had to read Romeo and Juliet, and I'm like, oh, I see what they did there. So, so what we're doing is not just an adaptation of Hamlet, but but there there is you know when Hamlet shows up in the play, he's basically fully formed, right? I mean, he's tormented, but he's fully formed as an adult. So we're like, you know what? This whole story of young Hamlet and how he gets to where he gets to. And you know, it'll, it'll, you know, we won't get to the actual Hamlet. play itself yeah. until later. But you'll see seeds that are being planted, Ooh. where, uh, and, and then even when we get to the play, there's gonna be. Oh, would you say there's some twists, Charles? Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of twists. So yeah. I think, I think the important thing is the relationships. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. him and his father, and his mother, the uncle. Like there's uh, him and his friends. Him, there's, there's love. There's revenge. So uh, I think uh, people will. There's murder. Resonate. There's, mur there's a lot of murder. I mean, you talked about how there's like going to be tons of action. It also, you were talking about like a thriller element to it. Um, I think, did you also say horror during the, yeah, there's ghosts. So that also like, I know Hamlet has all this, but I feel like because usually when we see stories like this, they don't really get into that. Mm -hmm. What is like something that you're really excited to show us in terms of those elements like horror thriller like also talking about superhero comics 
sometimes they'd be lacking in other, uh, you know, other genres. And I say that as obviously a fan of superhero comics. So. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I think that the, the toughest thing we had to do is create the rules of this universe, right? So in this universe, what is a ghost, right? And, and how do we, because we, we, we love that element of the play, as if Hamlet sees his father's ghost. And we didn't want to necessarily make it into a fake out or into something technological. So, so then when we came across this idea, the one idea of how ghosts can exist became integral to everything we do and probably every future story that we do going forward. Um, you know, because at Marvel, I was a big, you know, advocate of like, you know, make sure that the rules of the world make sense, yeah. you know. And, and Charles, you know, again, we were really sympathetic in that in that way. It's like, okay, it, it can't just be that, that someone dies and becomes a ghost. It, how do we base it in the real world in something that's relatable? But at the same time, I think when people discover how ghosts exist, it's mm -hmm. going to pull It's going to really, you're going to go, oh, God. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I have one more question for you guys. So we kind of talked in the panel about this importance of legacy in comics and what we leave behind. And I think it's really fascinating. When you said that, Joe, I was thinking about the fact that Disciple is the first book here. And I was just like, is that the most fitting thing ever or what? Like Hamlet is a story that is all about oh, this idea of legacy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, like for you, what are you excited to carry forward with that idea of legacy? And how do the themes also, do you feel, play into Disciple, into sort of the themes of the whole company? Well, Char you know, I think Char Charles, you should talk about it because Charles, Charles keeps me on the road, right? Because he, he, uh, he's, he's done Shakespeare in the theater. And, and he's like, no, 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 the theme, the theme, the theme, the theme. And I'm like, oh, right, 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 right. So, so I mean, because you, you related a lot to Hamlet. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I love that you themed it, though, without even realizing, because I feel like I said that and you were like, oh, yeah, that does connect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you said that, I was like, whoa, I don't know if that's intentional, but that's really cool. Yeah. That's sick, that's cool. Yeah, I think feeling an obligation to what came before us and what will come after us, I think, is central to Hamlet. I think it's central to the foundation and the ethos of Amazing. So yeah, I yeah. think you're right. I think it does make sense. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to show people just going forward with this company and with this book? Is there something you're hoping people will take away? Uh, again, you know, our, our, our slogan is establishing your imagination. Mm -hmm. I talked about it at the panel, and it's it's really it's it's, it's this is a this is a company for fans. We're we're just we're doing comic books. Uh, we're not creating IP. We're not creating content. We're creating characters and stories. And at the end of the day, um, our fans read our books. You know that that that, that pay our rent, put the roofs over our heads. Um, it's about you guys, and it's about uh, you know your cards and letters, what you think, and and you know we just. We just want to entertain. It's all we want to do is tell a good yarn at the end of the day, because that to me is when comics are at their best. When, when the goal is to create something that, gee, I hope we could sell it off at Hollywood tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and this is not like we're discounting Hollywood, saying, ah, yeah. oh, but that's not why we're writing these stories. Where are we going now? We talk so much, we exhausted our battery. So we had to, uh, but uh, Duck said that it happened right at the right time. It was like as a point was finished. So hopefully we got everything. Did you listen back to the audio? I'm always so nervous that the audio didn't go. Not yet. I haven't had time. I just switched up I'm battery. scared. I'm scared. Well, hopefully the audio went. That's always my biggest fear with interviews. We are just geeking out over all the magic stuff that we should not get, but also maybe maybe we might need some of this stuff I kind of want some deck boxes and I, I'm like we have too many play mats but I want more play mats no <laughs> if you want to get it now I can also maybe get it at Gen Con yeah. yeah but these cards are super cool we're definitely gonna have to get the Monty Python secret layer every time we say let's take a break from this secret layer and magic just rope us right back in because they got they got the swallow I can't I can't I need it I need the European swallow and we found out it flips it's African swallow on the back
right, y'all, where I think we're gonna call it a day. Am I wearing a mic? I am. I think we're gonna call it a day. Uh, we saw a lot of things. My head hurts. <laughs> I'm gonna film a video for you all, though, on From the Ashes. That might, that'll probably already be live by the time this vlog goes up. But uh, wow, what a day. We saw so many amazing things. I cannot wait to take my wig off. And uh, then we're gonna change and we're gonna go out and party tonight. Uh, yeah, we'll see you there. Until then, friends, stay nerdy.